What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds and welcome to another episode of From Bricks to Blocks, the series where I take real life inspiration and turn it into Minecraft creations. So this week you find me poking around the foreshore of a man-made reservoir known as Rutland Water up here in the north of England? It's north for me and I've actually discovered a very interesting looking church. Let me show you it. This is the Normanton Church. Now the building itself wasn't intentionally built on the water. It's actually been sitting here since about the 14th century with upgrades to it. The current building you're seeing here on screen is from 1826. And yeah, as you can see, it's a very magical looking place. It really did draw me to it the moment I saw it online and went, oh, that's going to be an interesting one to build. Now, what I mean by a man-made reservoir here is all of this water was flooded into a valley about in the 1970s, I think. Now, this church was part of an estate known as the Normanton Estate, which you can see here. The main house was around about here, I believe, uh, and it's all gone, long gone. Now, that, that was sold off in the 20s. This church, however, was left abandoned for years, and the locals came together in the 1970s and went, hey, we don't want to lose this. Let's put it into sort of its own little island, and that's what they did. So let me come over here. Look at that. So this tower and this portico was added in the 19, uh, sorry, in the 1820s, and that gives it that nice, distinctive Georgian neoclassical look to it. That has really, really drawn me to it. So unfortunately, as you can probably tell, I am not going up to this one because it is several hundred miles away from my house, and there's also national restrictions in place to stop people from going anywhere from local. Hence, why I walked to my last one. So anyway, let's get straight into that and see what blocks we'll be using for this lovely church. Right, yeah, so there's probably going to be no prizes for guessing what the main block for this would be. And that is correct, it's going to be Strip Birch. No, it's not. Strip Birch will play a part, and Strip Birch, I'm thinking, will form the columns that you can see here. Now, my first sort of thoughts on those were maybe trapdoors could do, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use Strip Birch instead. The rest of the church itself is going to be made out of uh, smooth sandstone, sandstone, and birch planks. The birch planks will help offset the Strip Birch and add a bit of sort of wear and tear to the building itself. That's the main structure pretty much there. You'll be using uh, smooth sandstone walls for anything like this up here, little details. I'm gonna go for the roof, as it does look sandstone as well, which I don't think it is. Uh, it could be molded, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna be using andesite for that, as I normally do for my sort of lead covered roofs. And the pineapple, I'm, that's going to be a tricky one to do. We'll get onto that later on. Uh, and then for the roof itself, I'm just going to use a normal selection of andesite and stone bricks, probably mixed in with some mossy stone bricks as well, just to add that little bit of texture. And then using my texture pack, I do have uh, sort of darker edges to glass, especially if, I think it's dark gray glass. And I'll be using that to give these windows a nice little detail. And then just some trap doors and finishes around the place. And that is the block palette done. So I think it's time now to move on to how I'm going to build this one and show you guys how I go about doing that. Right, so we're over here again in MS Paint. It's a great tool for doing this sort of thing as it just allows you to draw on any picture you really want. I'm not trying to sell MS Paint. You guys already have it on your PCs, I'm sure. And also just a little heads up, there's a lovely happy couple here in this image as well. I don't know who they are, but they obviously were enjoying their wedding and this picture was just online, so I just took it um, and used it in this video. So I apologize if I am showing off your wedding day here, but still. So this church, as you can see, is fairly blocky and it's fairly straightforward. There's a lot of symmetry going on so what I'm thinking for this straight away is these sections here will equal one block wide uh, and in doing so you kind of set the design completely from that now I think the windows should be two blocks wide and again in doing so this section in between the columns and the windows should also be two blocks wide so each bay in turn will be six blocks across uh, with one block either side for the columns now the columns can be made out of stripped birch and the inside walls out of sandstone. Now what I will be doing as well is I'll be building the church at its full height as it was before 1970, but when I do take it onto my server, I will be building it in quite a romantic landscape like it is in right now on some water. So just bear that in mind when you see the, the actual building being built, it will be taller. It will be a considerable amount taller because this is the floor level now, and that's the window sills. So you'll see there's probably another maybe meter below. 
So that is just a little sort of heads up when you see the church and go, ooh, that's not been scaled, right? It has, it's just been built back to how it was. So anyway, back to sort of divulging into this, we have a nice cornice up here. So I'm thinking probably one block of cut sandstone and then a upside down stair across the top there of sandstone, maybe birch as well. We'll see how that looks. And then when it comes to this section around the back here, we'll come to it properly later on, but this is like a circle. So I've got the floor plans as well for this. Uh, they don't have any dimensions on, they just have the shape, luckily. This is like a circle that bolts, it's like a vaulted room, sort of goes round like that. Ends up here with an alcove, a little niche at the back. So we'll see how that looks. I'm probably thinking maybe two, one, two, as the sort of shape of the circle there. Uh, and then we'll sort of do the rest up here. All of these balustrades you can see on the roof, I'll be doing just the sort of sandstone stairs uh, and then probably some cut sandstone on top of that. But I think it's time to jump into the game now and see how that first wall is looking before we move on to this section here where we get the sort of tower dimensions in. But let's go take a look at that. Right, so the first piece of the puzzle is in place now. Look at this. I'm really happy of how the dimensions have turned out on this. It was quite a struggle. So originally in my mind, I thought about doing these windows three blocks wide by four blocks high or even five blocks high. Too big. The whole church would have turned out probably two times too big. And we didn't want to do that because that wouldn't look right. But this is what I mean by the extra height here. So this is where the original floor level would have been. Uh, and you can see here, this is where the floor level is now. So there's nearly two meters, maybe even three blocks in our game here, uh, probably two and a half there, of extra ground. So it's already feeling a bit more grounded and a bit more like a proper church, which is nice. Uh, you can probably see the overwhelming impact of the smooth sandstone. Don't fear. Uh, I, I do like smooth sandstone as a block, uh, but I don't use it heavily, especially not as just pure smooth sandstone. So what I will be doing is texturing this wall and the entire structure once we've built it, just using some world edit commands with multiple brushes and tools like that. We'll show the, I'll show you that later on if I do remember to. But so far so good. I am really happy of how this is turning out. You can see here for the capitals on top of these columns, I've gone for just the sort of basic fence gates up here as that just gives that a little extra detail without putting like this a full, oh, without putting like a full thing on there. It could work again. It's okay, but that's very basic. Now we've got fence gates and have done for many years. It just looks a bit nicer doing that. Uh, and again, windows, I've just used some trap doors inside here to bring them in slightly. Uh, you could possibly leave them out, maybe making it a bit rounder. I don't really know. I think either or works perfectly fine. Uh, what I could have done as well, instead of using columns and stepping the whole wall back one, I could have just done this with trap doors uh, and made like a sort of, and, and done that. It could work. I just don't like doing this with trap doors because that almost turns them into vertical slabs. And I think most of you probably know my opinions on vertical slabs. If you have an opinion on vertical slabs, please make sure you comment below because yes, someone already seems to do that. Anyway, no more shade throwing. Let's jump back over to MS Paint and see where the next part of this building comes from. Right, so back over at the images, you can see I have one here showing the church as it would be when you're looking at it sort of down the middle. So you can see the alcove and the little niche at the back here that I spoke about. And to be honest, I think I've done that quite well. I didn't, I didn't show it off in the video just then. Apologies, we'll have a look at that when we jump back into game in a minute. But what it does show is the whole building is symmetrical. Uh, ignore this, this is a, a modern addition, that's the doorway in now. What I'm gonna be building is the doorway at the front. Uh, but you can see here, this lovely tower is really quite striking. Uh, and again, I just wanna sort of talk about how this would work. These are like one block uh, by one block and then the whole thing can be scaled off of that. But still, I think we need to get on to the other section now. So let me just write. So looking at what is an architectural sketch from the 1970s when it was being flooded and changed, as you can see here, the line at which it's been drawn through here. Um, this section here is the next sort of thing to tackle. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same idea that each of these columns is one block wide. Then we're going to have a one block gap in between, then another block. So that's three blocks there, possibly two blocks, window of two blocks, two blocks, column so we're matching whatever we're doing here so this whole thing is three plus six plus three so whatever 12 is <laughs> okay 12 so that is 12 now hopefully if we get this right this section here is a square but don't worry too much about that i think i have a plan as you can see here if we don't make it properly 
These walls are quite thick on the outside, so we can always just move the tower in one block to fix that. It'll make more sense when we get into game, and I'll show you how that looks. Uh, then the portico needs to go on as well now as well, because that will give us a nice sort of indication of how this church is looking. So what we got here is three columns, uh, sorry, four columns going around, because you've got two, then two, uh, and that goes around in a small little semicircle that sits out the front of the church. Uh, and I think that, again, will be quite straightforward to do uh, and I think it's time now to jump back into game so I was just having a proper think about have I missed something there no it's just a corner going around yeah so let's jump back into game and see how this bit is looking right so here we are back in the game and it really is starting to take shape isn't it uh, it's quite a simple structure as I said before but now it's starting to really quite pop with details obviously once I get some texture in these walls it won't look like a sandstone sort of monolith anymore what I wanted to do actually is come around and add these little bits of detail in on screen uh, so in here what I'm going to do is fill this area up using world edit to make it a bit more of a sort of walkway area paved maybe so what I'm going to do here is type in the command 60% uh, one I'm going to use probably 20% uh, andesite and then 20% uh, 98 as well. So what that's gonna do is fill this area full of andesite stone and stone bricks. Makes it feel a bit more paved in there. And it's just a way of randomizing stuff using Word of it, using the percentages on there to give it a bit more of a sort of detail. So we're gonna do the same up here, but with some slabs instead. And there we are with that one as well, that looks good. So that now brings in the roof and the little area under the portico. So if you're wondering, these columns are six blocks high in between the, the capital and the plinth. Sorry, five blocks high in between the capital and the plinth. And that just, again, gives it a nice little detail there. Uh, what I want to do here is come in and build a couple of niches in the front here. So we've got a niche on the back we haven't looked at yet still. And we're probably never going to look at now because I'm around the front here. But what I'm going to do is build in these little bits here and then put the doorway in as well. So for the door, I wanted to go for mm, sort of pushing it back one block like this uh, and bringing it up like that, going across there. Uh, so these niches need some capping over the top. So they are just windows, but you can see behind where the walls have uh, actually encroached on it. You can't really get any wall behind it. But we're going to do the same here with this doorway it's gonna be one block lower and I'm gonna use sand uh, yeah these birch trap doors up the side like that and then inside that what I want to do is get out some dark oak trap doors and dark oak doors place them like that and then place these I got that stuck no I'm all right place these on top like that close it in and then you get this nice really long door effect without having to place doors on top of doors and make it look a bit weird so now it looks like the whole thing opens up and we need to put in a second niche over here and let's get that in, dig that out. This is why having two block thick walls really, really gives that extra bit of detail to a build and just helps bring it all together. But there we go. So that is this ground floor section done. And I think it's time to probably move on up to here once I fill this area in with some flooring. And before I forget about it, let's come over the back here, fix this section because obviously I flipped it. And look at the niche. Very niche, isn't it? Very niche indeed. Right, let's jump back over and have a look at how I'm going to build this tower. So the order of this tower, if you're wondering, is Corinthian. And you can see the columns in it all have these really nice details on the capitals of it. Now, I knew straight away this building was going to be impossible to do in-game to the highest of standards as I could. Um, so my first thoughts were these columns here on the outside are definitely, definitely one block still. I'm going to be using the stripped birch for that still as a way of getting that detail in there. What we can do here is make, you know, a stair window using four stairs around into a circle. It looks a bit square, but it is the best way we can get a round circle in a two block wide center. Now you may be wondering why on earth did you go for a two block wide center? It goes back to the idea that if I went for a one block wide center, it'd be too small. If I went for a three block wide center as the windows are three by four, the whole building becomes two times too big and it doesn't really work. So we're sort of stuck with two by two and yeah, it doesn't really, uh, it, it, it works. Let's just stick with that, it will work. So in here I wanted to go with, um, 
Yeah, I think just upside down stairs there. Maybe some trapdoors on the edges here to give a bit more detail. You can see here on the side it has an open section here. Uh, and actually the tower of this was based on the St. John's Concert Hall in London in Smith Square. Uh, I believe that was the inspiration for it, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but that was a Christopher Wren's building. And it's got four of these towers on the four corners. Speaking of the rest of this tower, you've got a nice cornice up here, which is just upside down stairs again. Probably using sandstone or mixed with birch again just to get the details up there. I'm thinking for these birch fence gates, we're going to keep the same motif moving throughout the whole of this build. And then we come to the roof. Now the roof is just a mess. <laughs> I think I'm going to be really struggling with that one. Uh, it's just going to be slabs of andesite, maybe some andesite walls for the details on the side. And then we have the pineapple. Impossible. Impossible to do at this current scale and size, but I will see what I can do best. I'm thinking probably birch fences for that, and that's probably the end of that story there. Uh, this little bit at the bottom, the plinth, um, for this little grating area, I'm feeling probably birch fence gates again, put in between upside down and right way upstairs to give it a bit of detail. And the whole thing is going to be built uh, sandstone walls, I think, just to try and keep it skinny and sort of slender along with making it round and curved so i think it's time to jump into game and have a little look at see how that looks and sort of cast judgment on this whole build as as um as it goes on and here it is the finished church and i've got to say the tower was a great bit of fun to try and do uh it's my first time of doing one of these sorts of towers and they are tricky very very tricky i've used a lot more walls than i ever normally use uh, you can see here just how it adds extra bit of detail while also allowing this sort of curving shape to carry on around here because as you can see here it looks terribly blocky i guess uh compared to the image but there is no way i could foresee to be able to make it look any rounder uh, and then there's the roof now this roof is okay i think this is the best we can probably do with a two block center and this is meant to represent the pineapple. Y yeah, I don't know. But I like the way that the stairs went, went back on themselves like this. It gives a nice little uh, plinth for that pineapple to sit on. And overall, I like it. Overall, I think it's great. And what will work even better is, is when this is taken over to my server and put into its actual location. Uh, I didn't really give much note or discussion to the roof. As you can see here, this is what I've gone for, just a conventional roof with uh, gables at either end. And then you've got this sort of rounded section over the little alcove at the back here. Uh, as I can see from Google Maps, and that was kind of what was going on with this. You can't really see, there's no pictures of the roof, so I wasn't able to do any more than that. So without showing it off too much, I think it's time to go jump into my server and actually see it where I intended to place it. I'll do all the texturing on the walls and that when we get over there. Now, heads up, I've done a lot of terraforming, so let's go take a look at that. So this is a case of when I get inspired to build something and I go the whole hog where I really didn't need to. As you can see down the end of this path, this very strange looking path, lies the church that we've just built. Now I have placed this in my world uh, and I have actually built an entire spit and uh, like coastline for it around here. This is my first time of doing anything like this with sand and gradients and all of that jazz. And I've got to say I had so much fun doing it. But the real reason I did this is just because the images where it showed the church sitting there on the lake really had me inspired to go, oh, I wonder what that would look like in the sea on the end of a large spit that you have to walk down like a causeway to it. And honestly, I think I have nailed it, if I do say so myself. But here it is, the church. And yes, look at this. Look how, this is perfect. This is much, I'm, I feel much happier about this than I did with the previous gatehouse video. I think this one fits well, the scale and the size is perfect. And now I've got it in the landscape like this. It just, it just really sums it up, doesn't it? So what I've done here is I've got a little rocky side around this bit, uh, mainly because the images that you see when you search up Normanton Church and the ones I use to help design this always have the rocks around it on, on this side of the picture. It is on the other side as well, but for us, I've built like a nice little beach around this side. So, you know, you can just sort of stand here on this little island and check it out and just go, ooh, ah, that looks really nice. 
So I've done the interior. Now let's have a little look inside. It's not your typical church interior. So for me and the rest of the guys on the server, this isn't a church. It was decommissioned to the church uh, probably about 50 years ago in the sort of canon of the uh, the game. Uh, and now it's used for purposes that I cannot disclose to you guys. So we'll leave that there. But what I have done, as you've just seen there, I've put in like a little staircase. And then this leads up as well through here and then out here into the tower. So you get up here and you have some absolutely incredible views of nothing. Out that one, some more nothing. And then this way, ooh, the parkland and the spit going back off down there. Shall we take a look at this in some shaders then, guys, and see how good this looks as well? Right, so here we are with some shaders on, and this is actually the first time I've seen this place with shaders on, and it gets quite a magical look to it. Let's go stand back over here for a second. Oh, I mean, I just love how water looks anyway. Don't it Just ignore the fact there's actual uh, wood in the water. But yes, look how magical this is. Look how inspiring this is. I... I'm happy I put some trees here as well. This helps break it up a little bit. Realistically, yes, you probably would have trees on a on a bit of headland like this, uh, where it's up high like that. But still, we're here for this, and this is perfect. Oh, guys. Well, you know what? I've had so much fun building this, and I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this lovely bricks to blocks. Uh, I will be back with more at some point in the future. Please allow me to just say thank you so much for the support on this series. It is something completely different, and as I said last time, people don't really do it anywhere. And I love that I've been able to actually sort of get a format working, and that you guys are enjoying it. But please, let me know in the comments below anything I should change, anything I should add, uh, and just, you know, which areas I should sort of delve into more, because I'm happy just to carry on doing them as I am, until one day I get bored, which I hope isn't anytime soon. Uh, still, let me know as well if you have any suggestions on buildings you'd like to see me do. Head on over to our Discord and share those in the building inspiration section with a sort of tagline saying, from bricks to blocks ideas, or something along those lines. Now, anyway, guys, let me leave you with a parting shot of the church from over here, maybe. Oh, yes, a stand on this bit of sand. Oh, no, a stand here. So, guys, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time.